Hi, my name is Mo and I'm an interaction designer. Um, I actually work on free and open source software and I use free and open source software to do my job. I wanted to show you a little bit about a tool I use called the GIMP. Uh, it's vaguely like Photoshop. It can do a lot of the stuff you can do in Photoshop. Um, there's pretty much nothing I need to do that GIMP can't do that people who are like me and do my job use Photoshop for typically. So, um, if you're interested in becoming a designer, especially an interaction designer, and you just don't have the money to shell out for Photoshop, or you prefer open source software, or you just want to try something new and different, um, the GIMP is absolutely something you should check out. Now here you can see my desktop wallpaper. Um, I am running Fedora 16, which is, in my opinion, the best Linux distro. And I'm also using GNOME Shell, which is, in my opinion, the best open source desktop. And I'm going to start up GIMP right now. The version of GIMP that I'm using is a development version. It's 2.75. And I actually get it from a Fedora people repo. Um, if you go to repos.fedorapeople.org and look for the GIMP unstable repo, um, that's, that's what I'm using to install GIMP. And... Um, it has a lot of features that are currently in development that will be released in the 2.8 stable GIMP release, which has not come out yet. But of course, I love my GIMP and I love getting new features, so that's why I run the development version. I also have some plugins installed, like I have the GIMP um, FX Foundry, which gives me a menu with lots of really cool effects, like the uh, the photo effects menu in FX Foundry has a lot of effects that you, you know people love Instagram and they love all the stuff you can do with Instagram. Well, a lot of those same filters are right here in the GIMP FX Foundry. So um, that being said, here we are. I just opened up GIMP. I removed my GIMP uh, configuration file. So this is pretty much what the GIMP should look like for you besides the plugins that I have installed. And what I recommend you first do, since I'm assuming you come from a Photoshop background or just, you know, the, the way GIMP works by default is not typical of most software applications because you have these floating palettes and you kind of have to window manage them separately and they're a little bit odd and you may not be used to it. Um, so what I recommend the first thing you do is to go to the Windows menu and do single window mode. And this enables your palettes to actually dock to either side of the screen. Um, the second thing that I recommend you do that honestly I didn't know about for a long time until you know one of my, um, one of my colleagues actually pointed it out to me, go to Edit, Preferences, and then go to the theme menu and enable the small theme and watch. Watch the toolbox and watch uh, the palettes when I do this change. I'm going to select small and suddenly you see all my icons get smaller so I'm squeezing that little bit of extra amount of screen real estate um, across every single icon on the screen it actually makes a big difference and it gives you more room to focus on your artwork. Okay so another thing that I learned from a tip from a colleague was um, there's a little little shortcut hit tab and you can hide all your palettes hit tab again and oh, oh there they are so if I create an artwork here I'm gonna do a blank blank image I'll do US letter landscape okay I'm gonna hit one to zoom in hundred percent so I'm you know doing my artwork at at the same um, zoom la la level that my artwork should be at if I hit tab and then I start drawing Oh wait, I want to change brushes. Hit tab. Okay, let me look up the brush that I want. Change to a different brush. Hit tab again. Get back to work. So that's that's kind of cool. Uh, one of my coworkers asked me because he likes to um, show and hide his um, you know specific palettes in Photoshop uh, with the keyboard, so he can do that. So he's not bothered to have to go grab the mouse and go hunting for stuff. He just wants to be able to hit a shortcut and get to things. Um, some of the things you want to get to are actually already palettes that are available in the GIMP. Uh, the layers one was uh, one of those. So if I hit tab, okay, see layers? No, I don't. See layers? No, I don't. Another one that he wanted that um, isn't shown in GIMP by default, and honestly, I don't use it, but you know, I can see if you're uh, into photography, uh, it would be useful. If you go to the Windows menu and go to Dockable Dialogs, this is all the palettes that come with GIMP by default. So navigation was the one he was interested in. So there, now you see it, now you don't. I'm just hitting a key on the keyboard. Um, and you can move it to somewhere else. I'm grabbing these by the tab and dragging them around. 
so you can change them around. Um, and one thing you may be noticing is as I'm dragging them out, um, since this only has four now, there's enough space for the label, so the label appears. But if I drag this back up again, all you see is the icon. So if this is kind of you know crazy for you, if you don't like this default behavior, um, every tab has a little um, left facing arrow towards the rightmost area. And uh, if you click this, the top area of the menu has options that are particular to that tab. So this is these are all specific to the gradients menu right here. Okay. And then this is uh, this lets you add a new tab through the menu rather than enabling it and dragging it around. Okay. Um, it also has settings here that are specific to sort of the, the meta of the tab. So here I can say tab style. I want it to actually be icon and text. Or you can say tab style. I only want it to be the icon. And you can turn on, on the style that you prefer, um, so you don't have to, you know, live with the way that the GIMP does it by default. So that's that's one thing there. Um, and let's see another another model of how um, the GIMP works actually is you can see we have the toolbox here on the left, and I actually by default tool options is here. I think I like dragging it here, and then I like having layers here, and then I like making my toolbox skinny. Because I don't know, that's just that's just how I'm used to it. Um, but anyway, so the model here is you select a tool from the toolbox, and as I select these different tools, okay, watch this lower right area of the screen. So here I'm selecting the text tool. Oh, suddenly it changes to have options related to text. Here, a brush tool. Oh, look, it has options related to brush. Um, so that's sort of a general model just to think about. So having that tool options. Um, Palette as being part of your default palette set, you know, it's um, it's it's pretty handy. It's pretty powerful. Um, I guess another thing to know about the palettes is you can actually you're not stuck with just like the left side and the right side and that's it. You know, you can go all double decker here. You just grab them by the tab, and as you um, drag that tab around the screen, I'm holding down my left mouse button right now and let go. You can actually build out um, a whole set of menus as you like, you know, depending on what your preferences are. Now, if you put a lot of time into this and you, you came up with something that you think is fantastic and you just want to keep using it, um, I think by default, if you close the GIMP and reopen it, it will, it will open the way you left it. So let's, let's test that theory. Um, I think so, because honestly, things stay the way that I leave them and uh, I never have to re-muck with things, but I'll just, I'll prove it to you, okay? So here we are, that, that just saved it the way that, that I like it, so that's cool. Um, there's also, if you go into the UI preferences menu here, um, let's see, interface, it's not interface, I don't go in here much because I don't usually have to. Um, window management, well this is for save window positions. Um, I wonder, that might be it, so if I do reset saved window positions to default values, and then I quit GIMP, and then I restart GIMP. What's it gonna look like? Yep, that's the way it is by default. So you can always reset it back, or you can save the positions, or whatever. But don't don't feel like you're doing all this crazy customization, and then the next time you open the program, it's not gonna be the way you want it. Because no, no, GIMP will remember until you tell it to forget. Okay, so I'm gonna reset this the way I like it, where I just do tool options here. Actually, it's kind of nice sometimes to have brushes here, too. Okay, there we go. And actually, here, see this brushes tab's there, but it's like, eh, you know, I'm not going to have any other tabs. Let's see. Hide the button bar. Yeah, it doesn't look like I can take that off. Okay, well that sucks, but that's okay. Um, so anyway, um, so I'm going to open up a new image again, and I'm going to make it landscape. I'm going to hit one to do 100%. I'm not so crazy about the rulers, so I'm going to do Control Shift R to turn them off. Um, another question a coworker asked me was, okay, so you're doing your drawing, okay, and 
oh, I need, I need to make it smaller now. I need to draw smaller. Now, you can go into tool options, and then you can, you know, go down here, and you can change the size of your brush here. Right? But, you know what? That's kind of a hassle, isn't it? Wouldn't it be cool if there's a keyboard shortcut so I could just tap the keyboard as I'm drawing so I can keep my hands and um, my Wacom tablet, as it were, um, where they're at, and then just, just change the size on the fly? Well, yeah, actually you can. Look at this. So I'm hitting the left square bracket on the keyboard to make my brush smaller. If I hit the right square bracket on the keyboard, then I can make it bigger. So yeah, there is a keyboard shortcut for that. Um, and I'm trying to think what else. Uh, well, one thing to keep note, note of here is that I am actually using a Wacom tablet. Um, I'm using it by default, the way the GIMP operates without a configuration file, so it actually doesn't remember my Wacom configuration. Uh, so I'm not getting pressure sensitivity, but if I go to Edit Preferences, if I go to Input Devices, I can actually turn on um, the special tablet features so that I get pressure sensitivity. So here, I'm going to select my pen stylus, and I'm going to turn it on to screen mode. Same thing with the eraser, and I'm going to hit save. I don't use the finger touch. Um, hit OK. Alright, so now when I draw... You can see I'm pressing down harder and it's a darker line and it's thicker and then I'm easing up and it's getting a little bit thinner and lighter. Yeah, so that's kind of cool too. So, you know, if you have a uh, brush that you've configured to change size based on the pressure, you actually don't even need to use the keyboard to change the size of your brush. You can just use the pressure that, that you're holding down your brush. Um, right, so another feature here that I was asked about is... Uh, shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts for various menus. Some of the menus that were of interest were the levels menu, uh, the curves menu, I think potentially you in saturation. Um, and yeah, by default, they don't have keyboard shortcut shortcuts defined, but if you go into edit keyboard shortcuts, it's really simple. Okay, I want a keyboard shortcut for levels. So I type levels, there it is. I'll make it control shift alt L. There we go, done. I go to Control Shift Alt L. Hey, look, there it is. So you know it's not too hard. Um, there are actually, if you look around on the internet, there are configuration files that you can load into GIMP that will automatically make these work the way they do in Photoshop. Um, I don't know what they are for Photoshop, so I just don't bother. Um, I guess one other feature that I wanted to show before I let you go is there is a feature. Um, called the GIMP Paint Studio. It's actually an extra that you add into GIMP. I'm currently working on packaging it for Fedora and it uses um, tool presets to do kind of cool things. So this is based out of the tool options menu and it, it works for various tools. I'll demo it for the brush tool. I'm making a new layer. So it's this little icon right here and when I click on it, basically when you're working with the brush tool or any tool really. There's all these different options. You can change the brush, you can change the opacity, you can change the size, aspect ratio, angle, you can change the um, brush dynamics. So right now it's set to pressure uh, opacity. So it's actually changing the, um, the, the transparency of the actual um, ink as I press harder or lighter. Um, there's all these different ones that you can configure and then for the one that you chose you can actually configure how much it affects everything. So there's all these different attributes. So there's infinitely many ways you can configure the same brush. So the uh, preset options here actually have these all saved up, different um, combinations of these that will do cool things that will emulate different real life effects. So like here's the bristles brush preset. So I start painting with that. Oh look, that's kind of cool. And then I can hit the left square bracket and make it smaller. Okay, so that's one thing. Um, we'll try a couple others. This one is a sharp pencil. And this one's a blue pen. Oh. This one is confetti. So there's a lot of cool little things there. And that is the GIMP Paint Studio um, plugin that I have loaded to do that. So I hope this little whirlwind tour through some cool features of the GIMP has been useful for you. If you have any questions from watching this video or, you know, you have things you like doing in Photoshop that you want to know how you can do in GIMP, just let me know and I'm happy to make another video. Thanks.